Greetings and welcome to my new video uh, vlog, I suppose it's called. And uh, you all know what I look like. Mainly in this vlog, you're going to be seeing my hands as I talk about things that are new in the studio, uh, what's coming through, what I'm doing, etc., etc. So um, I go to the library a good bit, about every week or two. It's picking up new stuff, inspiring things, uh, all sorts of interests going all the time. You know, there's a uh, law in economics about um, concerning this, and it says that you may be known, 20% uh, of what you do is what you're known for. And I'm like that. There's 80% of what I do no one knows anything about, has nothing to do with my work. Uh, this book, however, does. It's an interesting book on drawing. It's called. Uh, the schematic approach and typically with drawing books you'll find the same sorts of ideas with uh, immovable masses, the chest mass, the hip mass and the head and while this has a bit of that it also has um, an approach that I've never seen anywhere else really um, a lot of very straight lines um, the masses themselves, I mean look at this. This is a bit like an um, architectural diagram in a sense that that's what it's like. Um, but anyway, once you get used to the uh, concepts and begin to apply them, um, they are very helpful. Now the fellow that wrote this book, here, here we go, that's a good example. Uh, Joseph Mugnani, um, this is how he sees things. So you see a figure like this. I'll zoom in on it a bit. And um, you know, what are we thinking? Well, we you know we can guess what you're thinking. But uh, in, when you're an artist and you're looking at structures, well, you have different ways of uh, understanding the anatomy. Well, this approach. I mean, look here. That's not the rib cage. That's not a rib cage. That's ostensibly a hip mass. But this stuff, these two shapes, where do you? What drawing book do you see those in? You don't see them in anything. Um, but they do carry across to this. So anyway, it's a fabulous uh, book if you can handle this sort of alien perspective, strange perspective on the figure. As I said, I've incorporated a lot of ideas for this already into my work. Uh, here's a drawing where I got some of that uh, in and um, basically things about the way the limbs are in the arrangements uh, is largely due to that. Uh, here's another one, it's much larger. Same thing. Especially the hand, uh, it came out very naturally. So anyway, enough of that. Other stuff comes through the studio, Milton the Monster comic books. You know, people my age, you might have grown up with this uh, TV show, uh, cartoon. Um, it's interesting in a way because it's a treatment of a uh, Frankenstein type monster, but in this case, uh, the monster's kind and the bad scientist, who's actually sort of his father, is um, pretty ineffectual. So anyway, it's Milton the Monster. Uh, it's a pretty good comic, too. Now, other comics that have come through, I picked up Don Marquez's new Rocket Girls, Sensational Rocket Girls comic, which he's been working on for a while. He's talked to me about it. He said that uh, the coloring was a bit of a chore on this thing, doing it digitally, all these pages. Let me turn down this music. Hold on. Yeah, I don't want to have to be shouting all the time. I know you guys are used to that. Well, anyway, you know, uh, Space Girls are always popular. And uh, this book, uh, there are five sample pages on eBay where, where it's being sold. And, um, you know, showing the girls' bodies and all that stuff. I like Don's take on these poses, walking poses here. Um, and after we kind of get through the TNA thing a bit, then starts to get into a really interesting story. Kind of drops that, and there's a lot of action and other stuff going on. Um, 
it's really, you know, it, it's a lot of fun. Don is so good at telling these stories, uh, scripting everything. Um, he's got a real sense of adventure. It's inventive. And um, in a way, what happens is that there are so many guys out there like, well, I don't know how many, but I mean, there. I know there. I know I want to tell stories in comics. Uh, but what happens is because we got to. So where was I? We had a little battery failure there. Uh, talking about Don's uh, comic. Um, you know, you got to eat. So the way things are now in comics, you've got to pander a little bit with the uh, cheesecake pin-up, whatever girl art stuff. And uh, but once that's uh, done, you know, you pretty much want to get a good story in there. But a lot of comic artists these days, they never get to the point where they're doing stories because they get caught up in the hand-to-mouth thing of doing the pinups all the time. So in this case, I got to hand it to Don. He got his comic done, you know, because uh, I've run into the same sort of problems uh, trying to get my own comics done in between trying to pay the bills. Uh, it's a drag. And if comic fans supported um, not every comic in the world, but the ones that they really like, it's like it might be, might be good for everyone. I mean, pinups are fine, but it's getting to be a bit of a problem, you know. So anyway, when I got that, Don also sent me uh, the freebie, uh, There Might Be Monsters. And it's like, at first I wasn't sure what this was. It resembles famous monsters, right? It's got the text down here. But it's clever. Uh, this is a, one of Don's characters. It's his take on the Frankenstein monster. Appears in the book, uh, and down here, Professor Challenger, uh, which is I think Arthur Conan Doyle uh, and Van Helsing, uh, science colliding with the occult and Dracula and the monster. So uh, this comic is cool. Uh, War of the Worlds. Um, because he's uh, deftly combining these elements. Um, Bringing in Dracula, and there's a cute part in here with the Frankenstein monster, where, where the guy's gonna, oh, you know, um, you know, he's, he's trying to pull a gun on the monster, and the monster says, uh, "Kill me, I don't. You kill me, I don't want life," uh, which is great. The next greatest thing is Don using bees on the ends of his um, sound effects. Ker slam with a bee. I love it. So anyway, I'm not going to give away the ending of this. But this has got plenty of the kind of stuff that Don's uh, really, really good at. Um, cast of characters, some action, story, adventure, stuff like that. And here again, you can tell this one's a labor of love. And uh, it doesn't rely on sexual imagery and things like that to put itself across. So this is a great comic. You can get this on uh, Kablam or from Don through his eBay store. So that's pretty interesting. That's one thing that's going on here. Um, you know, I go to thrift stores too, uh, all kinds of places like that, uh, yard sales, whatever. Always looking for inspirational uh, art stuff. I write it all off on my taxes. Now this is a grade seven uh, reader for kids, and generally they have you know 20 different uh, little short pieces in here, and I like them because uh, each artist stylistically is completely different. They want obviously variety. Uh, this one for example they're using um, cut out paper so they're doing designs with watercolor or acrylic or something and cutting out the paper and assembling it which uh, you know it's just like oh I could try that call it phase two something like that. So I uh, go through here and I've got some marked. Um, this one for example he's flipping day glow mice. I, mean, I love the way this stuff looks and of course this sort of color scheme is so radical it's like would you dare to try this? And it's like yeah I'll try it. I'll use something like that so I'll take these illustrations I'll clip them and uh, oh, that's one of my phase two cards. Um, clip them and uh, keep them in my uh, collection of images. Here's another bright uh, illustrational style also pretty wacky they seem to save the wackier stuff for the back of the book. Not sure why they do that. Another interesting style. Kind of reminiscent of uh, paper cutout stuff. And um, don't credit the artists in this thing though. Uh, it's nice pieces of scratch board drawing. It's got a lot of charm there. But yeah, so I'll, I'll clip stuff out of here and uh, I can't keep every book that I buy and so I either recycle them uh, or, uh, 
get rid of them. But I put the um, put the images. I collect them in these binders. And this thing has got all sorts of images for magazines that I couldn't keep, or magazines that got damaged in the uh, flood here a few years ago. A basement was flooded, not in this house, but in another house. And uh, I can flip through here. It's a bit of nostalgia. It's also get your creative juices going. Makes you think about magazine layout. Makes you think about color, design. You know, you name it. So this is all stuff. It's condensed, um, distilled um, resource of all the crap that I look at, I take in through my eyeballs uh, all the time. And man, I can get tiring. So we put that away. And uh, what else we got is uh, two books just arrived. Um, it's the same book, two copies I get because I uh, contribute um, artwork to a French publisher. I basically let him use anything that he wants um, and, and use it on these book covers. This is an interesting anthology of vampire stories used another piece of mine on the back. And, uh, so that's new. What else is new? Oh, a magazine illustrators. Now here's a nice piece by Bernie Fuchs, who you il illustrator buffs will know about. Uh, typical of uh, well, the end of the magazine illustration age. This is 1961. But uh, take a look at these figures, the highly naturalistic uh, quality of them. Um, loose, loose treatment in the um, rendering. Um, nice romantic shot, little gesture. See the fellas putting his shoe on. Uh, she's got her shoes off. They've been walking in the sand. He's smooching on her. That's a nice. Uh, I'll clip that out too. That magazine was damaged. So uh, anyway, that's uh, we'll call that the end for now of uh, edition number one of What's New in the Studio. And uh, see you next time for number two. Adios.